بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد We have a very interesting topic here The place of Akbarianism Akbari طريقة أو دي Akbari philosophy Calling it Akbarianism is something that we need to discuss And Shadhlism Shadhuli طريقة أو so in the thought and practice of the Ottoman Damascan Shatti dynasty of Hanbali Muftis too specific in my opinion too specific I, I maybe we will have we have like a couple of people on a couple of people who can be described as as this uh, or, or or a couple of people maybe uh, um, through which such a topic can be investigated I believe it's very difficult to discuss it like this I will try to tell you what I know about what you are mentioning first of all I, ha I need to comment on uh, making the word uh, um, uh, Akbari or Akbarian Akbarianism I would say the exact same thing that uh, other uh, that philosophers and critics said when I, w when they first heard the word absurdism yeah uh, the, the, you know the theater of the absurd the philosophy of the absurd um, and then they developed the word to say absurdism yeah uh, some of them didn't really approve of this and they wanted to say the absurd but they didn't want to say absurdism they didn't think of the absurd as something that can be called absurdism because of what the uh, this the um, suffix uh, ism the suffix what it what it indicates the meaning that it indicates i do not think that there is something that we can call ak ak akbarianism and i do not think of the tariqa of sidi muhiddin as a tariqa that can be followed by people it is his tariqa his uh, practice what can be followed the azkar that can be recited or anything you will find these things within the other turuk and this is what i find really interesting so as a qadiri for instance you'll find these things in the qadiri tariqa yani. for instance we have a word that comes from sidi muhiddin directly and you see how the hanbali scholars defended him in the past Sidi Muhyiddin ibn al-Arabi to the extent that Ibn Taymiyyah himself liked him to a great extent before uh, yani before uh, before they uh, before they fell out let's say uh, and then he started attacking uh, attacking him um Akbarianism I do not think I have anything to say because I believe that the Akbari Tariqa is not a Tariqa that can be followed. It's not a Tariqa that should have a Shaykh and it cannot have Muridin followers who say we are Akbarian or our Tasawwuf uh, comes from the uh, Ak uh, Akbari source. I do not think so. I do not think that people co can call themselves uh, Ghazalian in the Tasawf. I do not think that people can uh, call themselves um, uh, Junaidi in the Tasawf. You see? However, you will find a word from Imam Al Ghazali, or a word from Al Hafiz Al Imam Muhyiddin Al Nawawi, a word from Sidi Muhyiddin Ibn Al Arab, radiallahu anhu jamiyan in the turuq in the different turuq for instance the three the three names of mentioned they are in the awrad of the qadri in some of the awrad of the qadri hmm. let's talk about as uh, the family of of shatti and and the hanabila in greater syria in general uh, most of the Hanabila in the world are Qadiri some of them were 
Khalwati and because of the Shaduli influence in Greater Syria some of them were Shaduli most of them had more than one tariqa yani followed a certain tariqa then another tariqa yani in in his Sufi journey he became a student in the Shaduli tariqa then the Qadiri tariqa the Khalwati tariqa then the Qadiri tariqa and you find it uh, more often you see that it, they began with a tariqa and they end uh, or that they begin with the tariqa and they end with uh, the Qadiri tariqa but I mentioned three turuq and I do not remember any Hanbali who was anything else yes so you have Khalwati and it, it was not just the Khalwati the, the one who authored the Hashia on Muntal Iradat and other people yes and you have Qadiri and this is the dominant one you have Shaduri especially in Bilad al-Sham greater Syria hmm. then we have to understand another important aspect in the Qadiri Tariqa we mention Ash-Shadhuliya and we respect them and we bridge certain gaps that might exist in only in people's minds by saying that all these are connected and it's one isnad, one chain. Certain turuq have influence on other turuq. In this case, the Qadiri tariqa. Because of because of history. You understand that the city of the Qadiri came first. Yeah. Influenced the Shaduli tariqa. But we acknowledge that these are different masharib, different sources. Hmm. The family of Ash-Shatti To the best of my knowledge Some of them were Qadri Some of them were Shazuli The problem is that we are talking about a family That came in this late phase Of the Hanbali Madhab In this late phase in general And you At, at some point you would See some overlapping like a person who receives both turuq or a tariqa that combines both turuq regardless of what I think about this because I want the Qadiri to be purely Qadiri just the Shaduri to be purely Shaduri and I do not like this mixing regardless of what I believe um, I think this helped a lot in preserving the Hanbali Madhab because if a Hanbali becomes Qadiri this is perfect and if a Hanbali becomes Shaduri I think this is also very good because of how the Tariqa is in perfect harmony with the Madhab or the Madhab is in perfect harmony with the tariq I think another important aspect is to mention that the Ottomans preferred having one madhab one tariqa one school Hanafi Maturidi Naqshabandi prob probably during the times of the Ottomans in greater Syria al Shatti were either Qadiri or Shaduli or or so you will find and we I think we read this in the madrasa that they some of them defended Sidi Muhyiddin actually established a very good understanding of the Hanbali Tasawuf in other words the Qadiri Tasawuf and defended Sidi Muhyiddin and his Aqid because Sidi Muhyiddin or the Tariqa of Sidi Muhyiddin 
the akbari tariqa that in my opinion cannot be followed represents the haqiqa of the tasawuf the haqiqa that is that exists in every tariqa in all all of the turq all of the sufi turq so if we defend his aqidah, if we defend his tariqa, if we defend his positions, we are actually defending in tasawuf in general. And I think this is a, 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 a very short uh, text that we read in Madrasa defending at tasawuf. Defending tasawuf in general. How? By or through defending the positions of Sidi Muhiddi. The aqaid of Sidi Muhiddi. But the aqaid of Sidi Muhyiddin are actually the basis. Because this is this is the aqid al haq yani this, is, this is the true aqid. The basis on which the Sufiya established their uh, turq. I'm not saying that before Sidi Muhyiddin no one knew the aqid. I'm saying what he expressed actually with proper interpretation is something that uh, that has to be defended because it was the aqidah of people before him and it is the aqidah of anyone who belongs to a proper or uh, um, a proper Sufi discipline at the end I th at the end of this I think I should mention one more thing that our scholars Shazuli scholars from whom I received Qadiri scholars from whom I received they say that it is haram to read the books of Sidi Muhyiddin actually they say it is haram to read the books of Sheikh Taqiyuddin Bdaymi unless you are and you are and you are unless you are Taib. even if you do not follow this position what do you understand from this you understand that the chances that you get confused or you misunderstand what is said by these people are high. Yeah. Also, that these people made certain mistakes and they cannot be followed. I'm talking in general. Or that their positions contradict with what the four aim agreed upon and you understand that from a Hanbali perspective you cannot disagree with what has been established by the four aim that's why Ibn Rajab wrote his treatise so you have to take all these things into consideration I said everything that I know about this topic um, and I hope you find some of this beneficial at least and I hope for everyone when you choose a tariqah to study and to follow that you choose a proper tariqah do not just follow your desires this is a very important reminder and as we always say the tariqah chooses you you do not choose the tariqah in other words, you do not choose the tariqa. No one chooses for you. The tariqa chooses you. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani yakhtaru lak. Allah is the real door of things and He is the one who makes such a choice for you. How? This can be discussed in, in, um, in some other time. I think this is enough now. والله تعالى أعلى وأعلم وصلي اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين